these terminologies are used very liberally when talking about the parotid regions and especially the temporal and infratemporal regions. So let's dive into that. There are two fascia that are given the name of temporal fascia. There is temporal parietal fascia that is the superficial of the two layers and there is temporalis fascia or temporal fascia. If you want to keep things simple, always when thinking about the topic, think in the terms of superficial and deep. But in the books, in the notes, if you are not given the words, be very vigilant that if the, the book, the notes is talking about superficial layer, it will be talking about temporoparietal. And if the word temporalis is used or the word simple temporal is used, we are talking about the deep temporal fascia. So let's go from inside out. The temporal fascia, the temporalis fascia, the deep temporal fascia. It is the one that is attached to the mark. It is the basically though that one that is covering that covering the temporal muscles. So it is attachment. It's like near that of the temporalis muscle. Temporalis muscle was attached to the inferior temporal line. This fascia is attached to the superior temporal line. And here it goes down and it attaches to the arch of the zygomatic bone, zygomatic arch, it is attached to that. Before attaching to the zygomatic arch, it is split into two facial layers, superficial and deep. So there is a little cavity created between these two layers that is on the top of the arch. It contains a few structures that we will discuss. So it bas it, this cavity, it's not so important as itself as it contains a penetrating branch from superficial temporal artery that is called the middle branch or zygomatico temporal branch and then the zygomatico temporal branch of maxillary nerve these are the ones that are going inside and this fascia this fascia after continuing with the zygomatic arch it goes down and it forms the two layers of the parotid glands. Let us see in this particular picture. This fascia, temporalis fascia, deep temporal fascia in this particular picture is shown in the light blue color. This is the point where my pointer is. This is the point where temporalis fascia, deep temporal fascia, it is attached to the superior temporal line. Above it, it is continuous with the periosteum of the cranium, pericranium. We follow below it, it is covering the temporalis muscle, so we call it temporalis fascia. Just above the zygomatic arch, it is divided, split, and it is attached to the outer and inner margins of the zygomatic arch. These two split layers, they continue down to the inferior margin of the mandible. These two layers go all the way to the inferior margin of the mandible. And these two layers are basically making the capsule of the parietal gland. So there is the outer facial layer, there is the inner facial layer. Both are actually coming from temporalis fascia. Here it changes its name. The outer aspect it is called parotidomysteric fascia because on the back aspect it is covering parotid. A little anteriorly it is covering the mesoteric muscle. So it is parotidomysteric fascia. It is split into these two names and there is deep layer and they join at the lower margin of the mandible and they go to the height bone. Do you remember this fascia? So this is basically the whole extension of the investing layer of deep cervical fascia. If you remember from the lecture, from the second lecture of neck, we talked about the investing layer of deep cervical fascia <clears throat> that was covered attached to the inferior margin of the mandible and it enclosed between its two layers, two glands, parotid gland and the submandibular gland along with the two muscles that were on the back. So this is that extension. So if you follow back, that is the suprasternal space, superficial layer, layer, investing layer of deep cervical fascia attaching to the height bone, coming to the mandible, splitting to form the two layers of the parotid gland, parotid mesoteric fascia attaching to the zygomatic bone, above the zygomatic bone becoming the temporalis fascia, attaching to the superior 
temporal lines forming the glia aponeurotica uh, sorry uh, please ignore glia aponeurotica it is uh, to form the conjoint tendon and it continues up as the con uh, pericranium so this is temporalis fascia then there is temporal parietal fascia the one that is above it that is superficial to it that is shown in the red brown color here this is the one that is superiorly it is attached to the temporal parietal layer the same temporal parietal fascia is attached to the same conjoint tendon that is why it's the name conjoint tendon because this is the point at the level of superior temporal lines there is attachment of both the deep temporal fascia and the superficial temporal fascia above it it is continuous with the glia aponeurotica the aponeurosis between the frontal and the occipital belly below it if we follow it it is the temporal parietal fascia this is the superficial temporal fascia that covers the outer aspect of the uh, temporalis fascia the deep temporal fascia as we move back down there is as we move down there is zygomatic arch it passes later to it then it passes on the little aspect of the cheek the this here includes superficial musculo aponeurotic system so here it includes a lot of the smooth muscles the skeletal muscles that are covering the face so this become merged with that so this is superficial musculo aponeurotic system and downwards it continues with the platysma superficial fascia the superficial fascia of the neck including the muscle platysma so this is about the uh, facial layers so this is the continuation we just talked about a quick revision the superficial temporal fa temporal parietal fascia the superficial temporal fascia if we look upwards it's the continuation of glaponeurotica conjoint tendon temporal parietal fascia superficial muscular aponeurotic system and the superficial fascia of the neck containing platysma and the deep temporal fascia it above downwards it consists of pericranium conjoint tendon temporalis fascia deep temporal fascia the two layers covering the parotid gland and the investigator